hundred attendees. So welcome, welcome everyone. Let me know in the chat, where are you joining us from? Denver, Matt's joining from Denver. Welcome, I'm joining from Houston. Hello from Mexico City. Oh, I see Austin, Switzerland, Sydney, Ukraine, Denton, India, Phoenix, Blake from Idaho. Welcome, welcome. Such a great mix and such a great group here today. Claire's with us from England. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here today. We've got an exciting conversation. Um, slated for you here with a very, very, very well-known expert in the SEO space. And so I'm going to give two or three minutes for everyone to join and then we'll kick off. But I think it's a great time to kind of give a shout out to the host of our webinar, um, Write Sonic and Chat Sonic. Guys, if you have not utilized this AI tool, you have to check it out. They have a fantastic community that will help facilitate your learning and help answer all the questions that really we all have with AI coming on online here within the last few months. I think it's shaken up a lot of different marketing tactics and strategies that we're using. So we're super excited to hear from um, Aleda today on that topic. So we're going to give one more minute for a couple um, a couple folks to join. Um, if you have questions, just a reminder, if you have questions throughout the conversation, please post them in the chat. Aleda would love to answer some questions at the end. Um, and so, yeah, don't hold back. Ask all the questions that you have in regards to AI and SEO. So I'll go ahead and kick us off here. Without further ado, I want to introduce Aleda Solis. She is the founder of Orianti, which is a boutique digital marketing agency with the mission of giving highly personalized SEO advice focused on growth um, for clients all around the world. She helps brands and startups be competitive in the SEO space in multilingual environments. And today she's going to present be presenting on how we can leverage AI to help boost our social media rankings. Our, I'm sorry, our search engine optimization ranking. And so without further ado, I'd love to introduce you, Aleda. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to be able to share with you with a, your fantastic audience. I see that they are from everywhere. So that that's very exciting to see for sure. Yes. So I know that um, Aleda, you've got a presentation um, that you'd love to walk through. So again, just a reminder before we start, post those questions in the chat, ask any questions you have. And Aleda, go ahead and kick us off. Amazing. I am going to start sharing now my deck, uh, which, by the way, at the end, I am going to start sharing too um, over my speaker deck profile. And I will reshare over social media too. If you don't follow me yet, this is the opportunity to do it so. And if you don't want to follow me, no worries. You can uh, go and take a look at the deck later on without having to follow me, no worries. Uh, but probably after this, you will. So anyway, I am going to share with you and I want to share with you how you can leverage AI uh, bots and functionalities and tools and search engines, uh, new generative AI uh, functionalities to maximize your SEO day to day, right? Like I, I am like, pretty much obsessed with this topic. And you can see that even my photo now is a AI generated uh, profile picture here. And I believe that we're at this pivotal point uh, where um, there will be a before and after, right? I believe that after what we have seen in the latest months, uh, we cannot expect to work in the exact same way. And that SEO processes that don't leverage the opportunities given by the la latest AI functionalities and tools will struggle to be competitive versus those that actually do it. And uh, as far as I can see, it's true that there were many functionalities, AI-driven functionalities in content development tools like Retonic uh, and many others. But the reality is that this like literally took the next level when ChatGPT was launched at the end of last year. And then it has been refined since, uh, since then, where even the release of GPT-4 um, in the last few weeks with uh, that has been also incorporated already to ChatGPT Pro, right? Um, we didn't only in the SEO community started to use it to support and automate our SEO task, right? Like I, I literally, this was my last pause of last year 
in my blog, like December 31st, a chat GPT for SEO, 20 ways to leverage it. Uh, and I share how we could, uh, from generating structured data for content, generate just for Israel Lang, um, to generate title tags, things like that, uh, to empower and support our, our day to day and a variety of plugins also and resources were also launched to make it even better and easier to use. So for example, one of those resources that I find super useful is AI PRM that is pretty much like a prom uh, layer uh, that suggests you with different type of prompts and allows you to save and share with the community too, facilitating, highly facilitating the, the task, right? Then after this, we saw that um, this pretty much sparked the race of search engines to release also their own chatbot interfaces. Um, the first one was Bing, and later on, it was Google Bard, which we have started to compare a lot uh, lately, not only with the Bing chat, but also with uh, ChatGPT, also with Rhizonic and all other tools, AI interfaces too. And I have to say that I, I am I am not, uh, let's say, uh, necessarily positively impressed by uh, Bart yet. Uh, it's obvious that it's still experimental and behind. Uh, in fact, we can see here when I asked for Bar, uh, for, uh, to Bart about who am I, uh, it says that it doesn't have information about me. But then when I ask Bart about my newsletter and my company, the, they provide a very comprehensive answer with my information included in it. So how you don't know about me is ridiculous, right? Like if we, like if I do the same with uh, ChatGPT or Microsoft Bing or Chattonic or any other um, tool, uh, bot uh, tool is, is definitely not like that. And of course, this is only a funny example of everybody on, on information, but it's like for many use cases that uh, many of us have been testing BART versus uh, the other chatbots. We can see that, yeah, um, generic task or very simple task that we can ask the Bing chat or chat GPT to about like, I'm doing all the building, I mean, for a remote working website, suggest me 10 highly authoritative websites that have covered this topic uh, that I can easily reach out uh, along with a couple of URLs where they have mentioned this topic uh, in order to do outreach. And uh, the Bing bot will provide them to me in a very straightforward way. And actually their answer is really good. Uh, and then Bart says that they cannot help me with that, right? They, that, so yeah, uh, we're not yet there, but I've been, this is just experimental. I expect that it becomes much more powerful, of course. And this new interface also uh, shouldn't be detrimental to SEO. At, it, it focuses on pre very actionable type of tasks and informational type of queries for which until now, we could see position zero, feature snippet already uh, shown in SERPs. Many of these queries will have been already fulfilled within the SERPs itself because of all those features that Google had pretty much integrated already. Um, being sure pretty much a little bit of their thinking and type of search paradigm that they 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 follow whenever identifying when the chat interface will be more valuable for the users versus the traditional search one, right? And I believe that this is more something that once it becomes more incorporated to uh, much more popular search engines like Google, we'll see much more um, the type of impact that uh, it has as a, as a from a using standpoint. Uh, but I also believe that as long as they, it keeps referring the, the traffic through citations, uh, through the sources of, of, of the information as being has shared to be committed to continue doing, it should be okay, it should be fine, right? What I, I am a little bit more concerned is like the willingness to, uh, for Google to do this because we have seen how they embark, like they are not necessarily like referring so much as, as a being and they have like sort of excused themselves saying that, oh, the content that we generate is completely new. So we that is why we don't refer to like, like uh, not a good, not a good, uh, uh, let's say excuse. Uh, but I, I believe that at some point they, the game changer here will be their advertisers and publications that rely on them. And th that, that, which is pretty much what here uh, Microsoft has mentioned in, in the past, right? Um, then on the other hand, we have content tools uh, and marketing, digital marketing tools, social media tools, um, a variety of tools that have already um, integrated even further type of AI features that already had 
some of them or were based on them, like in the case of um, Ritesonic, but then they also enable new interfaces, bot interfaces to uh, pretty much accelerate and, and provide uh, and support for this type of, of new type of interaction, right? Um, this is all great and I see a huge opportunity here. Because Google also finally share that they're okay with AI content if it's high high quality, original, and useful, which is amazing, right? They don't care how the content is generated as as long as is uh, highly useful and pretty much fulfills the need of the user in a positive way. Um, however. Also, it's very clear because in parallel, Google has started to shift a little bit more of their, let's say, criteria, principles, and even releases to give more prominence and visibility and to, let's say, um, a, a little bit more of like reward the, the human written content, right? With the additional E in EAT for experience and a bot cannot have experience, uh, at least not yet. <laughs> and, uh, and then also, uh, showcasing a little bit the outdoors even more with the new perspective features, right, that they have just announced uh, a few days ago. Uh, so my reflection from at this standpoint is, yes, there is a huge opportunity. We should definitely leverage it, but we need to be careful and we need to understand that it's one, not one extreme or the other, because in an era in uh, that content is pretty much commoditized by AI, um, the game changer type of criteria here will be having your own voice, your own experience, your own expertise, your own differentiated insights, providing unique value, establishing a brand, right? So I this is fundamental, this is critical. Uh, it's about, yes, being smart about it, leveraging it to take our day-to-day -to, -day to the next level and our positioning as a brand to the next level without overlooking what makes us different. Because if we only rely on the output of the tools, at the end of the day, our content with, will look exactly like the rest of the other ones that is already published out there using similar tools, right? So let's see how we can leverage these functionalities to support and advance our SEO day-to-day -day while keeping quality, which is important, with different angles and ideas than the ones that you can already see in my chat GPT for SEO article, where that you can pretty much extrapolate with many other tools too, that now pretty much offers the same uh, chatbot interface too. You can see generate relevant topics to target, classify a list of keywords based on their search intent, or cluster a list of keywords based on the semantic relevant things like that, right? Like, so, and you have the link here, you have the URL, so you can easily go to it. And before digging in on the different use cases, I think that there are two critical factors to take into account whenever doing this, right? That I want to really highlight. Um, the input, the first one, right? Like a clear and concise prompts as inputs are fundamental in order to obtain the highest quality output, right? And then on the other hand, the second one, which is expert output validation and addition in order to ensure that what we obtain is accurate, is factual, and provides the best possible experience to satisfy the user need, right? So the first step is to start ensuring uh, that your prompts are clear, are concise to generate quality results. And the best way to do this, I believe, and the easiest to remember is to use the five W's and the H, right? What is the expected task? Where is it going to be used? How is the format, language, tone, structure, length, characteristic constraints, um, all the characteristics of your task? Who is the target audience? When is it going to be used? And why you want to use it? What is the expected goal? So here you can see how I have use the five W's and the H here to obtain specifically relevant results, like generating title tags that really comply with the type of tone of voice, uh, intent, characteristic SEO principles, best practices, uh, to use them in, um, in these cases, YG's category pages, right? Uh, to facilitate this though, because I understand that sometimes it's too much to remember, I have created this school sheet generator uh, which is free, completely free, to write specific prompts using the five Ws and the H for faster results. Uh, it features three examples that you so you can see how it is used and and you can and you can pretty much like fill it, taking that as a reference very easily. And you can see here how to create a, a hop and spook model from a list of keywords. Here it worked pretty well and generated very accurate results. The type of 
can be really easy to use and actionable for in your own day-to-day, -day, right? So um, you have the URL here, so you can take a look. And so whatever we share later on is much more easy to put in practice to you later on because you will have this easy to generate uh, prompts that are much more specific. Then on the other hand, um, you shouldn't fall into factual originality or lack of quality and helpfulness challenges and issue because of lack of validation. This is very sad. This is one of the things that I think that they, they make a disservice to the opportunity that there is out there with all of these functionalities outdoors because it's just lazy, right? We have seen that certain publications out there that are, well, the authoritative publications have pretty much generated content on AI content on autopilot, pilot, right? Like what factual errors many times or fluff content uh, that you wouldn't rely to get that information from in the first place, travel information, travel advice, like, no, 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 no. This is just too lazy. This is not really inf informative for, for me, right? So let's avoid this from happening to you, right? It's important that uh, we're also aware um, that we don't only need to validate because of accuracy and quality, but because uh, literally language models are good for certain things like translation, summarization, content generation, sentiment analysis, right? Personalization, speech recognition, as, as Brittany mentioned here in, in this tweet, but there are all those scenarios for which it's not that good, like high level strategy, reasoning and logic, generalization, understanding context. So it's important that we are aware of these restrictions in order to validate better, depending on even also on the scenario and to use it for certain things more than others, right? So for quality and safe, safer results, let's follow this chat GPT flow chart uh, that I'm sharing here and have a subject, subject matter specialist to validate and edit the output whenever we use it, right? Like we cannot run uh, this functionality is on autopilot. And now that we have clarified this uh, to maximize our results, let's go through some different scenarios where we can leverage many of these tools. So for example, for keyword in competition research, organization and generation, Unfortunately, ChatGPT, even with GPT-4, uh, can be useful for many of the tasks that we are going to see later on. But for this one in particular, uh, keyword and competition research, it lacks of fresh data still, right? We can see that they have just released a couple of weeks ago uh, some plugins. One of the, one of those is a, is a browsing plugin. Um, I know someone that just a few days ago go, got fin finally access to, to plugins, but it's something that has limited access at the moment and we haven't been able to test yet in public, right? Uh, to, to the general public. So unfortunately, this is still limited. I expect that in a few weeks, it's going to be different, right? So we are going to be able to rely on these plugins to to obtain more fresher data with uh, GPT-4, ChatGPT. However, we can use other tools for that. We can use Bean Chart, we can use ChatSonic, we can we can use even Bard too, to get fresh keywords, content and competition data. We we even just need to ask them, it's like, what's the latest that they, that you can give me information about for, to ChatSonic? It's like April 6th, just, yeah, today, like the day that I did it, right? The, what's the latest that, that you can give me information to, to Bard? Like up to date, like right now, right? Um, and with that in mind, we can start asking questions for our own keyword research and competition purpose, like get the latest, most popular questions for any topics, the questions that people are searching for this year about this particular topic. So you have um, inspiration from real users about, yeah, what our topics are being covered, like using chat GPT for SEO in 2023, for example. And here I, I asked you uh, both Bing and and uh, Chatsonic, and you can also go more granular uh, as for the latest top keywords along with their search intent. And it, it they will be not only provided to you, but also explain, right? Like ChatGPT for SEO informational. So the search term has been increasing in popularity as more people become aware of the powerful deep tech from OpenAI, et cetera, et cetera, right? So uh, it's amazing how we can also obtain the context about these particular topics that we can later on use to really match, to keyword map, to 
integrate within our content strategy. And you can also take this to the next level. For, for example, you can ask them to propose a hope and spoke model for the specified keywords directly too. So, okay, okay, propose a hope and spoke model to cover the keywords specified in the previous answer and, and um, organize them in, uh, in uh, bullet points, please, for me. And they will do that directly here. As you can see, we can also get the top competitors and the latest published pages about the topics. So what are the top five websites publishing about this particular topic and which are the top pages they've published about this topic in 2023? You want to see the freshest content about this topic from these top players that you know are generating authoritative information because you want to have that as a reference, as a source, whenever you're researching about a new content that you're writing about. And you can also uh, directly ask them to suggest new related topics based on what has been covered by these sites without duplicating them. So suggest me three topics to cover about ChatGPT for SEO based on what has been covered by these previous sites, but without duplicating the topics. Provide me headlines for these topics. And the uh, chatbots, as you can see, uh, Chatonic and Bing, they will provide them to you uh, in a way that well, is, is comp I will say that is uh, pre on point. And, and then uh, we can double check if it is possible to rank with the same page for different type of queries. If you identify it's like, oh, these topics are great, uh, but I'm not sure if these type of topics will fulfill different intents if they should be targeted um, or they should be targeting different type of keywords, different type of queries. Is it doable or not? So you can ask things like, are the same pages ranking in the top 10 results for remote work and telecommuting in Google? How, ma how much, how many overlay between one and the other, right? List the URLs that are common between the two. If there are many URLs that are common ranking for the same query, uh, then it means that it will be reasonable for you to try to rank for both. Uh, and the intent is the same. The need is the same, and you will be able to run for them with the same page rather than creating different content for them. Uh, otherwise, you can end up generating content cannibalization, right? You don't want that. Uh, so you can easily check on real time that and check if it's viable also to run for a query across different country markets with the same pages, right? I, I do a lot of international SEO processes, and we can take this again in this other use case. Uh, which are the websites ranking the top 10 uh, UK positions uh, for Bluetooth over ear headphones. They're also ranking in the US and Australia in the top 10. I want to understand if it is okay for me to try to rank in these three different markets with the same type of page or are only localized CCTLDs or uh, some directories under GTLDs that are completely different uh, in these countries because Google is geolocating much more the results. Yes or no? Uh, and then directly, we I, I, I receive here the, the answer from uh, being saying, according to my results, some of the websites are ranking in the top 10 in the UK uh, for this query, are also ranking in the US and Australia. Here are they, three of them. Okay, then it's reasonable. I can go ahead and try to write a guide uh, that is similar to these pages because it's obvious that GTLDs are completely able to rank across the different markets without being completely geolocated, right? And we can also verify what type of content is needed to run for a query across different markets. Like what type of pages are ranking in the top 10? Um, are these guides, are categories, are product pages? Uh, what is the type of, of, of pages are tend to run for these queries? Um, because based on that, you will also inform your content strategy and you will uh, create content that is more commercial, that is more informational. Um, and here again, he tell us uh, most of these are our are, are guides, reviews that compare the different models of these products, right? Uh, and they uh, give me examples about them. So it's great. I see that I can pretty much go ahead and create guides for them. I don't need to create a new facet or a new category for it. Uh, and then we can use also the tool to obtain video content ideas based on trending videos about the topic. So just me five videos about and uh, topics about this particular query uh, or term based on the trending video content, describing what to cover in each directly. Right, so it's great because uh, we can see how comprehensive in this particular scenario being was providing me even ideas of specifically what to mention in each one of these videos. We can also get the hashtags to optimize these videos directly on YouTube too, to just hashtag to include in these videos when optimizing them. So it's, it's, it's very useful. They can complement very well uh, our keyword research 
and competition tools. They are not meant to replace them, but to facilitate the interactions, right? And then for content generation, organization, optimization, uh, we can create a content brief for an optimized, unique, comprehensive three keywords guide. I know that are tools like Writonic that directly provide like an interface for this. Uh, but in case that you want a little bit of more flexibility around that, you can say, okay, create a content brief uh, to write a comprehensive 3000 words about this product that is optimized for organic search, including descriptive content uh, with semantically relevant keywords. This guy should only include unique content with expert advice and reviews about product. Um, boom, you get it, right? that can serve as a, as a reference, as an input to the copywriter. You can also get up to my subtle title tax base, but without copying those of the top ranked pages, you can say, suggest five optimized title tax for a guide about Bluetooth over ear headphones, taking into account without, without copying the titles of the current top ranked pages about this particular term. Boom. We get the suggestions, right? We shouldn't be lazy and only copy paste them, but they can be great inputs to optimize and to understand what is more, more engaging, what is ranking well, what are, what, is the, what are the patterns that tend to work well, right? Uh, we can also obtain comprehensive and unique product descriptions based on top rank pages too. Um, you can do the same, like provide me suggestions of 500 words of descriptions based on the top rank pages that are already talk about them, that are already featuring them uh, about it, for, for this particular query or generate the FAQs for your products uh, with the answers without mentioning brand too. Um, you, we can get the pros and cons for your top product versus similar ones in the in the market too. Um, so we can pretty much facilitate the research that we tend to do whenever writing about something. Um, it's interesting here how uh, in this particular scenario, uh, it being even showcase uh, some ads, uh, very smart from them. Uh, but yes, I think that in this case also, uh, Chatonic here provided very point specific uh, answers that we can use. And we can even generate unique and descriptive images for your pages along with their alt tags, right? Um, I use um, Chatonic for this, as you can see. And it's it's nice because we can highly automate, like for example, alt tags are those type of uh, all descriptions, uh, activities that many platforms already support by default. In other scenarios, it's a little bit trickier to implement if these are let's say, world school type of, of platforms. And this is an easy way to generate them. Also, for inspiration, we can get facts and data to integrate within your articles along with the sources to facilitate the life of, of uh, copywriters. Provide me five key facts about Spain Digital Noma Visa to include in a guide about it along with their sources because I want to ensure that this is real that you didn't make it up because remember about the challenges about factual information from um, from, from this type of, of uh, AI tools, right? And we can also ask them to check the facts and originality of your content and ask them to make it unique and factual, right? Like check the accuracy and originality of the following content here. Uh, and yeah, the content you provide is smoothly accurate, but not very original. Here are some issues I've, I found interesting, right? And then you can say, okay, rewrite the content to make it unique and factual. And it will provide you this content. We can also ask to rewrite even the content to pass AI detections to rewrite this content. So it cannot be detected that it has been written by AI. And, and again, tools here are becoming much more sophisticated. Um, we cannot expect that this... Uh, will work 100% every single time. It depends a lot on the context too. Does it work? It depends on the tool. There are like different level of accuracies out there. I found many times that Chatonic rewrite improve a lot, as we can see, uh, with chat, GPT chat even further, um, or chat GPT even further uh, improvement, as we can see. Of course, tools will become more accurate in time. So we cannot expect this to happen in every single time and context. And it's okay. Again, AI content, it's okay as long as we ensure that it's high quality, that it has our tone of voice, that it represents our brand, that is unique, uh, that is actually helpful for the user, right? And to facilitate all of this, because you got to be, oh, okay, LA, this is great, but uh, it's not very useful to have this extra interface out there providing me all of this information. So I have found that the latest release of numerals.ai here, which is pretty much uh, an extension for Google Sheets and Excel uh, is very, very useful to 
pretty much connect with uh, ChatGPT, as you can see, and uh, pretty much do the same by calling Google Sheets functions. So uh, we can use GPT to answer questions, extract information, uh, to structure information, organize information as we like providing uh, prompts as if we were in the interface, in the chat in interface, but here integrated di di directly in um, Google Sheets, right? So pretty much there is a function there, personalized function that it will install you, for you called AI. And you will say pretty much generate a title tag of and provide the prompt of five, 50, uh, 55 characters maximum in a professional tone following the SEO best practices to make it descriptive, highlighting the most important keyword uh, at the start for the following article text. And the text is in column A. Bloop, copy paste across all of the cells and it will provide them to you in bulk. Amazing. So you don't need to be doing this one by one. You can get it in bulk um, at scale for your tools. And that can highly, highly facilitate your life. Uh, for technical optimization and validation, we can also um, take it to the next level uh, only than just generating some static code, right? We can generate an XML sitemap for a list of URLs, which is great, for example, or get the PHP code to automatically generate an XML sitemap for any new indexable URLs, uh, which is even better, right? Because it's not only about generating code or something static, but it's now actually helping you to facilitate the optimization of something within your own platform or CMS, right? You can get a hierarchical navigation structure uh, for a list of URLs too, uh, to facilitate the optimization of, of uh, your website, uh, internal linking, navigation, and you can get cross-linking suggestion of a list of URLs. So uh, propose which of the following URLs should cross-link each other based on their semantic relevance, or get the code to implement JavaScript based non-crawlable links by Google because most of the times we want to our, our links to be crawlable and then they will be HTML based uh, or even correctly render uh, href tags in the code that are rendered correctly in the DOM, which is okay. Um, but even in certain occasions, you want to link something and you don't want to pass value. You don't want to refer those pages. You don't want the Google bot to follow the the link and for that well you need a code that you know that Google won't be able to to render because now it is capable to render a lot of of uh, JavaScript based links is it, what is it you can ask uh, the the bots here to provide you with a code and you can double check and validate as usual to see if that's the case and get step by step instructions to add canonical tags via HTTP headers in an Apache server in case you want to uh, canonicalize PDFs, for example, and you cannot use the typical code in the head of the HTML because it's non-HTML content, right? Um, you can also get a step-by-step -step instructions to add of lines in HTTP headers too, uh, something also that might be needed in certain international SEO scenarios or get the H PHP code that generates FAQ page structure data for any guide on your site that gets published. Uh, generate PHP code that the, uh, that generates FAQ page structured data for any page under the guide subdirectory, including H3 as questions, the H3 HTML tags, and text with the answer tag as answers. Bing, bing, copy paste on your code and you can pretty much generate it. And for link building, tools can be also quite useful. You can get a list of experts who have already published about your topics to reach out. Provide the best known experts of writers that have written about remote work, uh, the most recent written article about the topic and their social media presence or website to reach them out. Bang. Uh, both tools, in this case, Chatsonic and um, ChatGPT provided accurate answers. Get a list of relevant podcasts or YouTube channels to pitch to be a guest of in case you want to get out there to talk about uh, a particular topic in this particular case is about remote work. Uh, get insights about a journalist or blogger you can refer to when reaching out to them. I want to know a little bit more about the profile of an important founder in the remote work world because I want to, um, well, send them an email to invite uh, to write a guest blog post or to be a guest on my podcast or I want to be able to connect with to to sell an idea, for example. Um, and then you can follow up saying, write me a personalized outreach email using this information. 
using these insights, right? Write a personalized professional short, but engage in an actionable outreach email to this person using the previously specified insights about him to get in touch with him via email, asking him for a quote for your latest remote work trends article on this website. Yeah, to facilitate the process, ask him to just reply to the email with his quote and you provide the relevant citation. Amazing. So you can see that uh, there are so many different ways to facilitate our work without harming the quality, we're replacing completely our day-to-day, -day, but actually empowering it. I believe that this will all only evolve and very fast now with the support of ChatGPT plugins, including a browsing one, or with tools like Sapier here that will allow us to connect with so many other tools uh, at the same time. Does this mean that AI can replace SEOs then? Only if you're a one-trick pony, not a strategic SEO, like pretty much you dedicate your day to generate title tags, to write title tags. And of course, if you end up doing like a one thing without understanding the why, uh, the goals, the context, um, if you're not a strategic SEO, then yeah, it will be easy to replace you. But if you take goals into consideration, the context, the business challenges, technical challenges, um, and establish actions that connect with your actual goals, it will be much more difficult for a bot to do that. Also, uh, if you're an SEO who actually gets involved in the execution, that I have to say that a lot of SEO processes, most of them, after a while, they become not knowledge problems, but execution problems, because what is hard is for your SEO recommendations to get implemented, right? So the coordination, the communication, the influence, the management, a bot cannot do that, right? With a different multidisciplinary team. So don't be afraid uh, because I know that many have been asking about, oh, I am going to be replaced by, by one of these chatbots. Like, I don't think this happening in this particular context if you're an strategic SEO, right? Um, I believe that we're findability, especially is working to surface and provide visibility and ultimately traffic and sales and conversions to our clients, whatever the search interface and paradigm is used um, in the future. So for example, here, Charlie, who had access, access to the plugins of ChatGPT is already showing how the Shopify plugins works, which pretty much surface product information right there, right? So it's like another thing that we can certainly optimize. So he's like, SEO can operate on their skill sets to optimize search and focus on answer engine optimization. Indeed, um, I believe that as bookkeepers shifted to become accountants and financial analysts after spreadsheets were released um, many decades ago, we need to keep evolving to whatever search interface is used to provide our value and our work and our efforts to surface information and provide visibility to our project or clients there. So as you can see, it's all about leveraging the available AI functionalities to support and evolve your SEO work. Thank you very much. I hope that this was useful. I hope that this has inspired you to take action and to implement many of these functionalities and tools in your day to day uh, to achieve results faster. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Aleda. If you'll discontinue your screen share, um, we'll go ahead and start to take um, some questions here because we do have quite a few questions um, that have come up now. So um, I know that we've given we've dove very deep into specific use cases in relation to using AI to help you rank on so uh, on. For SEO, but I think we, if we could take a step back, because I know there's a few people in the audience who are very new to this space. So if you could add a very like high level, you know, uh, just basic level. I even had a question: What is SEO? What is SEO? Why is it important for your business? And then we can kind of move into some of the AI specific questions. Yes, of course. SEO is search engine optimization. It allows you to improve your ranking and organic search results um, of search engines by improving your website crawlability, indexability, um, relevance, popularity, and ultimately rankings, right? Like it's, it's pretty much the optimization of your website to allow search engines to easily access the content, to understand the content and identify the authority and popularity of the content to fulfill the, the search needs of users and rank accordingly, right? So yes, there's a variety of, of tasks and different areas at hand that need to be well aligned to ultimately tell Google, look, this is the best page uh, about this particular topic. And I deserve to rank better whenever someone is searching for this because I will provide the best, more, more useful and accurate 
uh, experience to the user looking for this particular information. Thank you for that explanation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the things with, that you're trying to do when you're trying to rake is, you, is you're trying to create relevant, accurate, timely information that people are searching for online. So you use some different use case examples where you could use it to help you generate content ideas. But when you're um, when you're going through those content ideas, how do you decide what is where you need to iterate from there? So basically, let me give a, a high level example. I have a, a podcast agency. So tell me the top 10 questions people ask about a podcast agency, right? And then tell walk me through your workflow from there. If you're going to create a tree of different topics, what can you walk me through some basic steps of your workflow? So for example, I, I, I believe that you can start and you should definitely start with the workflow that you already have in your day-to-day -day as a specialist, right? If, if, if you're an SEO who works with a lot of good content, for example, uh, you will likely already have a process in, in place for keyword research, for competition research, uh, for content uh, creation. You will uh, certainly know how to create a brief and already have a process to create a, a brief and a workflow. Uh, uh, many of these processes will be already semi-automated already with existing SEO tools for content tools. Uh, so what you should do is to try to identify which of these can be improved. Where do you still spend too much time uh, by doing things at hand or putting things together or validating things to head together? So for example, you might have your keyword research tool and process and go to SEMrush, href, whatever tool you may use, and then go to your uh, content optimization tool uh, that has another interface and try to put them together. It's like, oh, why I don't just ask the, the chat to facilitate this in a single interface and provide me all the information together rather than having two different uh, platforms that will take me a little bit of more time to use, right? These type of things. Uh, so I think it's, it's, it's essential that rather than uh, reinventing the wheel, trying to start from scratch, you already see what you are dedicating more like legwork uh, at. And based on that, you try to automate. Yes. And, and, you know, based on that, I know there's a lot of concerns about using like uh, using GPT and other AI tools um, to write content specific, specifically in the legalities around that. Do you think that the author's expertise is going to be valued alongside these tools or if that's going to create an issue? It will be fundamental because of what we, we mentioned before and you referred to, right? Like the problem comes when you pretty much copy paste whatever these tools are are generate without validating factual information or validating if just a copy of something that is already published out there or if it is high quality uh, or it's just fluff. Uh, so having an expert yourself or keeping your expert, please don't don't think that this will replace your experts uh, that, that can provide first-hand accurate information also provide like this additional layer to delight your users like really good copywriter or content marketer oh my god that, that they're writing you can uh, the, what's the other day someone say okay can you please tell which of this was generated with ai and what which version was generated by a human you could definitely tell right because when someone knows their stuff and and have and also have the ability to communicate well by written. When you have testimonials, when you have facts, when you have this additional layer of, of your own tone of voice too, um, your own brand, this is when you delight your users, right? So I will say that, yes, this will allow you to pretty much rather an example, rather than creating five amazing blog posts per month, you will be able to create potentially three times more, four times more, but that should be the thinking to improve uh, your 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 accelerate your activities rather than change what you have at the moment. Yeah, I'm great insight there. I mean, the one thing is there are human nuances to communication and voice and tone and expertise, real world expertise that is not being put into AI that you gain. And so you're just really kind of backwards using these tools to help shorten that workload for the things that machine learning can do at a much quicker pace than we can. Um, another question here, um, how do you think uh, AI is going to change the algor algorithm for Google if we want to rank in an organic way? 
Uh, I think that we will need to wait for that, right? Like, I mean, uh, we need to wait first for Google to integrate BART in their actual search interface. Right now, it's something completely independent. Uh, right. In fact, when many people have referred and say, oh, but it's not adding enough citations. It's like, it's like, wait, it's not even integrated, right? Like, I think that um, Bing has already shown how differentiated it is. And it's a completely different tab that we, we use. And many times they refer from the chatbot to the search results when they see that the intent will be better satisfied in search results. Uh, I believe that many times also Bart will refer to Google results at the end, searching Google too. So I don't think that they would want to even cannibalize too much because first, it can be risky from a user experience standpoint. Secondly, they still want to refer a lot the traffic to, especially their advertisers, right? Not necessarily to organic. Sure. <laughs> right? To their advertisers, they do because this is how they make money. So I think that they need to be careful there. Um, I don't think that we will see like a huge shift one day from another, but uh, like in, like soft integration, little by little, in a way that they can test and assess how this impacts user uh, experience and and engagement too. Um, so yeah, let let let's take a look and let's see also what are what are let's say the rank, new ranking factors or additional ranking factors that we can take into, considera into consideration depending on where is placed if if it is if it is something that is at the top or in the sidebar or is in a completely different tab so it won't necessarily affect the top 10 rank pages anyway things like that yeah, absolutely. We're definitely still ahead of the time. And I think it's a trending topic. So uh, there's this idea that it's a lot more widespread than it actually is currently. Like you said, top organizations, top SEO specialists are using these tools. But um, is there, someone has a question here about if if we're, you're just getting started with AI, it's all very overwhelming, right? Uh, there's so much information out there and misinformation. Do you have any uh, resources or specific uh, sites or tools that you're using to help you learn and stay up to date um, on best use cases and how to use it? I think that Charlie Wagner, uh, the, the person that I um, provide citations from, um, he's, he's always engaging and always sharing about AI in Twitter. I will retweet him a lot also and share his information. So you can you can take a look at my in my Twitter and, and take a look. Charlie Wagner, don't worry though. I you can if you go to Twitter, I will retweet his account so any of you uh can take a look at him. It's, it has a sorry, a complicated name for me to 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 share, but it's uh data chess at data chess in Twitter. Uh like this. Perfect. I already yes. So there, there's a resource for information. Of course, Alayda mentioned lots of tools that she's using throughout the webinar. This conversation is going to be available after. So don't worry, you can go back, review the conversation. Um, I know Alayda, people were interested in slides. I don't know if you were going to share those or you had those available. I will be sharing the slides. So no worries. Unfortunately, I will need to go now because I have very limited time at, at the moment. Uh, I'm afraid it's a little bit late for me. But I, if you want to ask me more questions later on over Twitter uh, resources, I will be sharing my deck too later on. No worries. Um, I, I, I'm more than happy to continue sharing with you. No worries. Fantastic, you guys engaged. Thank you so much for all of this information. It was so helpful. There's so many great, um, you know, tools that you mentioned and use cases here. Um, so thank you for joining us today. We won't keep you, but uh, uh, in the meantime, everyone, please go follow Alayda on LinkedIn. Follow her on Twitter. Um, that's where she shares most of her information, like some of the great articles that she shared in her slideshow. She's written there on AI. Um, thank you so much again to uh, Chat Sonic and Write Sonic for hosting this amazing webinar. This conversation will be available on their LinkedIn. It was streamed live today on all platforms. And don't forget to sign up for the Discord community, guys. This is where continuing conversation and staying up to date on the best features and use cases and how to integrate this into your workflow to help save you time and help you become better at uh, your business and ranking on your site. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, we're, we're so grateful for Aleda. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Bye-bye. It was a pleasure.